Dear postgraduate MD anesthesia students, wish you all the best in your forthcoming MD anesthesiology exams, which are likely to be starting another few days. And probably after a fortnight, you will be expected to answer your viva. Friends, wish you all the best, dear students. And I can assure you, you can pass MD Anesthesiology in flying colors if you follow some of the instructions which I am going to share with you. Well, in the exams, very rarely you might be asked what is your thesis topic and details about it and discussion in the topic of thesis. But there is a possibility, faint possibility, it could be also asked. Mostly, it revolves around your theory, performance and viva. You must score at any instance more than 50% in your theory. Once you pass the theory, then only you qualify for viva. In viva, very rarely anyone is failed unless he is not at all answering or antagonizing the external especially or answering absolutely out of context, tangentially in a different axis than the question being asked. In Viva, you have to be very careful to be intelligent enough, smart enough to answer, be pleasant, be polite, be respectful, especially to the external examiner. Okay? Only once you are asked to be seated, wait for that and then be seated. Don't just walk into the examination hall in Viva and be seated. Wait for the examiner to tell you, be seated, be comfortable and they will ask you the question. Don't be worried, <laughs> they are not your enemies, they have come here to pass you, unless you are totally wrong. And uh, don't talk too much and at the same time, don't be too brief. Try to answer, little elaborate. And uh, if you keep on answering that, the examiner himself or herself would know that yes, you know the answer and he or she would ask the different question. Till that time you go on talking on it at loud and clear and distinct voice. Examiner gets irritated if you are just mumbling or muttering and you are not audible. Be loud and clear in your viva. Viva is definitely very crucial in passing in flying colors. As I have said, majority of you would pass automatically unless you have committed totally antagonizing answer, tangentially wrong answers. Normally everybody passes in Viva. But your criteria in Viva is to score as much as possible, as many marks as possible. Sky is the limit. Examiners normally give even 75% marks and 80% marks in Viva, which is impossible to be scored in a theory. Well, in theory, you have to answer all the questions. Give equal importance and time management to all the questions. As far as possible, try to answer all questions. If you have left any question, nothing can happen. If you have written something also, there is a possibility of the examiner to be little liberal and giving you few marks so that you come to the pass stage of 50%. Unless you score 50% in theory, the question of passing MD doesn't arise. But here, the criteria I am trying to make you score as many marks as possible. So coming to Viva, what are the questions which may be asked? You might be asked about arterial blood gas analysis. You should know what it is. You might be asked what is modified Allen's test. What is the role of kidneys in maintaining acid-base balance? What is the difference between actual and standard bicarbonate? You should know what is actual bicarbonate. The actual bicarbonate is value calculated from the blood gas sample. Whereas standard bicarbonate is the value obtained after correction of carbon dioxide level to 40 millimeter mercury at room temperature. I'm sure you know all this thing, but you should know and be confident enough to answer. How do you calculate the oxygen content of the blood? You should know the formula CaO2 equal to hemoglobin into 1.34 into SaO2 plus 
not not 3 into PA. What is the different methods of analyzing acid base disorders? That is very important. Respiratory disorders are due to change in the TCO2, whereas metabolic disorders are due to alterations in bicarbonate. Based on this approach, acid base disorders are classified into six primary disorders metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, acute and chronic respiratory acidosis, acute and chronic respiratory alkalosis. What is compensation? You should know rules of compensation. They might ask you, how do you determine if compensation is present and to what extent? That's very important. How the response, compensatory response takes place, that you should be able to explain clearly and you should be clear about it. Then only you can answer. They can ask you about x-rays, the normal x-rays like congenital diaphragmatic hernia x-ray, something about it. They can ask you about pleural fusion, pneumothorax. These are the common thing, hydro pneumothorax. Uh, the, you have to read the x-ray and tell um, the details about the x-ray. And uh, you have to see whether is there is any bronchitis x-ray. How do you differentiate emphysema? And uh, the one x-ray would be definitely there, that is mitral stenosis and pulmonary hypertension. And that's very, very easy and you should be able to answer it. There should not be any problems. So, uh, x-rays are very important. At the same time, you should know what is supraglottic airways and the normal instruments and all which you normally use so very often in the operation theatre. You should be well aware of. And the drugs. Drugs are very essential. The common drugs and difficult drugs also. Rarely used drugs also, you should be aware. The um, external examiner or internal examiner may ask some questions on drugs, you should be aware. And ECG, you should be able to read, uh, the calculate the axis and how you have derived the axis in ECG, that's very important. And how do you see prominent U waves or how do you uh, differentiate between Wolf, Parkinson, White uh, and um, syndrome and how do you identify it? All those things you should be able to tell and uh, uh, you should be able to uh, differentiate right bundle branch block RBBB and left bundle branch block. Left anterior hemi block which is very very common in many patients um, and you should be able to know and tell the criteria of identifying a left anterior hemi block at the same time left posterior hemi block also might be asked and very simple question Benke back heart block like Mobitz type 1 and 2 block you should be able to identify it and torsage de pointers is a very favorite question especially people like me you would definitely ask something about torsage de pointers in ECG and um, how did you identify it how do you treat it all those things are very common and uh, you should be able to differentiate between atrial flutter and fibrillation that's very important so, so the viva consists normally of these things and there could be an ECG of myocardial infarction there may be discussion on myocardial infarction because as an anesthesiologist you normally deal with such things and few questions on mechanical ventilation also could be there in viva regarding theory normally uh, Stock questions that are asked in theory, you should be able to answer adequately. Most of the questions are equally distributed, 10 marks per each. And there will be 10 questions in each paper of four different papers. So you must, there is no second thought, you must attempt all the 10 questions with equal distribution of time. That's very, very important. Put as many charts, flow charts, writing or something uh, like tables or diagram. Diagram is very, very important. If you can spend little time writing it, drawing a diagram, nothing like the examiner usually are flowed by good diagram and good handwriting and good presentation. That's very, very important. You should put a diagram also if possible because so many things are understood by one single diagram that you really know the answer. So try to put diagrams and be as uh, legible as possible. You can't help now, you can't change your handwriting now at this stage, but try to be legible, that's very important. What are the normal stock questions in theory? Normally management of uh, post anesthesia care, PACU, like well, how do you, what do you understand by that? You must uh, write about monitoring in PACU, post 
anesthesia care in PSU. Uh, how do you um, do hand over the patient, monitoring, post-operative nausea and vomiting, airway and respiratory complication, assessment and management of hemodynamic issues in the PSU, neuromuscular complication, delayed emergence and discharge criteria that you must mention. So, uh, like Aldrich score, discharge criteria, you should explain all the points and that, that thing. The chart has to be written and prominent and clear. There could be anesthesia for renal transplant question. The anesthesia for heart transplant might not, might not be asked, but you should be well prepared for that also. Anesthesia for liver transplantation could be asked in your theory. And massive blood transfusion is very common questions and management of complications is very common question. Mechanical ventilation in a post-surgical patient is normally asked in a theory as well as in fiber. Principles of chronic management and acute pain management is always asked. Perioperative nutrition is again very very common questions in theory. Normally if you see the 10 previous uh, years questions the same lot are repeated. Unless some new questions on COVID may be included, like something COVID management, because it's the burning topic, COVID management or mucormycosis or something like that, it might be asked. Labor analgesia, you must be aware and you should be able to write something about it. And anesthesia for traumatic brain injury and brain tumor surgery is normally asked. Congenital heart surgery and you are expected to able to run like like valvular heart surgery how do you give anesthesia for that or CABG coronary artery bypass grafting you should be able to write about the anesthesia and ECMO also may be asked and uh, anesthesia management of a patient with sepsis sepsis always asked sepsis pathophysiology and sepsis management always without fails us. Anesthesia in a remote location like Nora, um, that very commonly asked. I know RA. So, anesthesia and decay surgery is very common. Anesthesia for patients with burns is very commonly asked in theory. Anesthesia for elderly, what are the complications? How do you conduct the anesthesia in elderly? That's very common. Obese patient. Always make a point. I can vouch for it. There will be a question on uh, anesthesia for obese patients. You should be able to write in detail. And uh, anesthetic management of patients with diabetes uh, mellitus is very common. You are expert in hypertension with hypertension. How do you manage? Even in Viva, they may be asking you about the management. So, wish you all the best. I'm sure you'll be able to do excellent. Please take care of your health. Don't read um, after 11, 11 p.m. in the night. R read as much as possible during daytime, as much as possible. And do combined study because you tend to sleep uh, during excessive reading and prolonged reading. And all. Do combined study, that will be easier because discussing the topic and preparing with your um, you know, peer group is very essential at this time. I wish you all the best. I'm sure you'll fly, you'll um, pass in flying colors in MD anesthesiology. This is Colonel Pradeep Pindiala, Professor of Anesthesiology, wishing you all the best. Thank you for patient listening. Once again, wish you all a very, very happy Ugadi, which has just passed yesterday. And wish you all the best in your future endeavors after passing MD anesthesiology also. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.